So my name's Nina Edge. I live ten minutes away from John Archer Hall, where we're sitting. And um, I'm involved here in growing food to give away at the food bank. Climate change is a big worry living in a river city. Uh, the, I've studied the underground water in the city of Liverpool. I can see how uh, the, water, the change in water level, the change in sea level will affect housing, it will affect roads, it will affect parks, it will affect even food production. So um, as, as my, the focus of, of my attention at the moment is growing food, many of the allotments are on the, the water courses of where the rivulets and streams run down from the land, come down, come together into the River Mersey. So the change in water level for people in Liverpool is going to be significant. So the, the food that is grown here is mostly um, given away into the community and the community come on a Thursday and they come and they volunteer and they grow their food. Many people tell me new things to do with the food. So, so uh, Fatima, she told me that you can put sage in milk and it stops the milk turning. So that's something from Somalia to bring in. Um, and a next lady from Pakistan, she's telling me about turmeric in milk. So it starts a whole conversation about using foodstuffs for health. But we, we don't grow turmeric here yet. It's not, it's not that warm yet. So in what I do as well is I grow a lot of food on, a, on an allotment site and I show many people how to cook things that grow here. Lots of the vegetables that grow in the UK are not cooked or widely eaten. So you don't find people cooking the things that are the most easy to grow, or you don't even see them in the shop. So broad beans, runner beans, Swiss chard, spinach, uh, French sorrel, all these things. You don't have to do any work to get them to grow. You're going to have a lot of them things. So away from food, I mend things. I grew up at a time where everyone was expected to mend things, where I... The, the people I grew up with, they showed me how to mend and hold on to things and give them away or sell them on. So I mend, uh, famously I still darn socks, I sew up the holes in socks. So in, in the climate change lockdown, um, we used to meet and sit on the wall and drink tea two metres apart and I mended, everyone's, I mended everyone's socks and I showed other people how to darn the holes in the... That I showed everyone how to darn the holes in the socks. So then also materials, so if I use something for, um, say some shelves have just come down, well, I take the bracket, brackets off the shelves, wrap them up, keep store the wood behind a piece of furniture so that next time we need shelves, the, the shelves are there or they can be given away or used again. So very big on mending things, keeping hold of things to pass on, and also making one thing into another thing. So I have to make um, a bag to carry my tripod in later today, so I will just take the legs off a pair of jeans where the bottom is worn through, and then I'll have two bags for two tripods if I just make a, a shoulder strap for them. So a lot of working with the hands to, to, to just reuse things. The things that I buy have tended to be second-hand. I've bought a lot of second-hand clothes. This jacket used to belong to my mother. These jeans used to belong to my son. Um, the, so buying as little as possible. I mean, I, I'm, I work as an artist. I don't have a lot of money, so I don't spend a lot of money. But the, if I can, I'll buy from someone who's in a shop in Liverpool, not online. So... Someone earns some money here, then they can spend their money here. Um, or from the local people on, in the area that make things by hand, which is much more expensive, but then you're supporting someone in their craft. Um, consumerism, as in, um, you know, the, the ostentatious purchase, purchase of expensive items, that's not been my thing ever. Uh, but I, I suppose... I do benefit, I have benefited from it as a cultural phenomenon because I get things out of skips all the time that still work. I've got a juicer that I pulled out of a skip. I've got lots of the things in my house came out of um, recycle. 
energy-wise, uh, gas is so expensive that I won't allow anyone to turn the heating on <laughs> in my house until dark. Um, the, I'd put solar, uh, a solar PV array on my roof uh, several years ago, so there's a certain amount of energy generation uh, coming from my home, and I've bought a tiny panel that's used for... Um, caravans and camper vans in a way to sort of figure out if it's possible to make an emergency supply to charge a laptop or charge a phone off if there's a problem with the energy supply which I suspect, strongly suspect there will be um, so l- lowering consumption but that's based on cost as much as anything to be honest no one can afford the gas and we're generating some small amount off the house.